Hello everyone and welcome to week two of our course. This week we're talking logistics. So there are quite a few questions and worries that you talked about in the first week and some of them will be addressed in a document uh, that you will get this week. And Maria and I will talk about a few other questions and what we're going to do is we're going to provide two answers for those questions. One is a very straightforward uh, step one, step two, this is what you do uh, answer. And the other one is kind of absurd, kind of funny. Uh, let's, let's provide answers that are so hilarious or so unexpected and absurd that they make our worries uh, seem very light. Okay, and that might help as well. So the first question that we have is, whom do we invite to a math circle? Maria, can you answer that? Well, um, there is this poem, right? We looked and we saw him step in on the mat. We looked and we saw him, the cat in the hat. So, uh, of course, we invite our regular members, uh, children, maybe parents, but uh, we think of inviting weird people, unexpected. Uh, just uh, often times I say, if you have relatives visiting from out of town, bring them in. And we have these relatives, kids, grandparents, anyone come in and sometimes they bring such wonderful ideas. Um, I invite for a short time whoever comes to the door if we are in uh, some common space or a house. Sometimes random people come by and we invite them for a few minutes and kids show them things. Um, sometimes there are local volunteers who are not parents, not children, but like to play with parents and children and it's fun to invite these people. So uh, you can think broader of who comes into the circle. Okay, so the second question is how long should a circle last? Should it be half an hour, an hour, two hours? How often do we meet? Once a week, twice a week, every couple of weeks, once a month? And should we do an ongoing circle? For example, we meet every week um, for a whole year. Or should we do like maybe cycles? We meet six times, we take a break. What is the better format? How about just meeting straight up for 48 hours or 168 hours the whole week. Why stop? Ongoing circle 24-7 for a year. Okay, just kidding, but um, there are actually, think about different formats and different times. Um, most circles do meet for maybe uh, six weeks or so, eight weeks of a session. Some meet once a month. Um, these are usually more event-oriented circles like um, scavenger hunts or problem solving. Uh, then there are circles uh, that, uh, that are just one-off meet once for a special, special event. But think about retreats, for example. You can have a retreat and really get to go at it for a couple of days, for a weekend, somewhere nice. Uh, think about really tiny, small circles for a minute where you get kids together, do a question, an activity, maybe take a snapshot of something and then you go play. So that, that would work uh, great at some other event, of course, or maybe a family gathering. So think different, think short time, longer time, brainstorm about it and think where you can get with the meeting times. Okay, the next question is probably the most uncomfortable for many people. It's a question of money. Do we need to ask for money? Can we just do free circles? Why? Why not? If we do ask for money, how? 
do we do that and how much to ask for? So um, the plain answer is you can look at activities in your area that are similar to, to, to your circle, to the type of the circle you do and uh, maybe uh, some children's sports uh, groups or robotics or some other activities uh, that, uh, that have similar format and see what they charge and uh, set the money at about that price. Um, but the real fun answer is you may not need money but you need an economy of some sort. So it may be a non-monetary economy, you may trade things so you can have a cooperative where you everybody comes together and contributes work and time. This is very popular in homeschool circles uh, where people get together in, in little cooperatives. Or you can have a gift economy where uh, people are paying forward and everybody does something wonderful but maybe it's not such a tight structure where uh, people take turns formally. Uh, this works great for one-time events. Everybody comes in and contributes whatever they want. Um, or you can have a monetary economy where either you have a sponsor that typically happens at universities or some larger community centers where a circle may be sponsored by that institution where the institution pays people to, to run it and uh, people who come in and sign up understand that structure or you can have uh, participants pay but uh, people get disoriented without the economy people get lost so if you randomly offer a free circle most people would ask questions, why, how, what's going on here, where are we? So uh, it actually helps with the comfort of people to think through your economy, uh, whatever the economy is.